For over 100 years, some people have suggested that the Turks and Caicos Islands become part of Canada as a province or territory. There are a few different ideas about how this could work. Some people think it should be its own province, while others believe it should be part of an existing one. And you know what? Many Canadians are excited about having their own version of Hawaii with world-class beaches. That's why today we will look at this exciting idea. So, sit back, relax, grab your sunscreen and favorite beach towel, and get ready to explore the possibility of Turks and Caicos becoming Canada's newest province. Some of you may already know that Turks and Caicos is a British overseas territory, but for more than a hundred years, people have talked about making Turks and Caicos a province or territory of Canada. But why is this even being talked about? There are a few reasons for this. Turks and Caicos is a gorgeous tropical paradise with beautiful beaches and crystal clear waters. And as a Canadian province, it could provide Canadians with a new holiday location without needing a passport. Furthermore, some think bringing Turks and Caicos into Canada will contribute to commercial growth and development on the islands. However, there are some concerns and complaints about this plan. Some believe Turks and Caicos are culturally and geographically different from Canada and should be treated as such. Others are concerned about the island's potential negative impacts, such as losing their uniqueness and way of life. So, with all these different opinions and factors, let's explore the possibility of Turks and Caicos becoming Canada's 11th province in more detail. Before we get into the idea, let's review some background information about these islands. The Turks and Caicos Islands are 40 islands and Cays in the Southeast Atlantic Ocean, not far from the Bahamas. Only eight of them are populated. The islands are home to about 57,000 people, and their economy is heavily reliant on tourism thanks to the attractiveness of its beautiful beaches and luxurious resorts. The original Taino people, enslaved Africans and European colonists left their mark on the island's culture and history, making for a fascinatingly diverse past. Most of the current populace is of African ancestry, with English as the official language. Now that we have some background on the beautiful islands, let's talk about the different times the islands have considered joining Canada. Back in 1917, Prime Minister Robert Borden first suggested annexing the Turks and Caicos Islands. He brought it up at the Imperial Conference. But as you can probably guess, his idea didn't exactly go as planned. The UK Prime Minister David Lloyd George wasn't feeling it as he wanted to have strong shipping ports for his country, so he shut the idea down. But in the 1970s, the idea of the Turks and Caicos joining Canada became a hot topic again. Other British Caribbean territories had declared independence from the UK, and the Turks and Caicos didn't want to be left behind. So on March 15, 1973, the island's territorial council put together a petition asking for permission to get cozy with Canada. They hoped for a closer economic relationship with their big neighbor to the north, especially because their economy was struggling then. The idea continued in 1974. The Canadian Parliament got a proposal to explore a closer relationship between Canada and the Turks and Caicos Islands. But sadly, the government didn't show support, and it never went to a vote. Even though it didn't pass, it did get people in the Turks and Caicos talking again about becoming part of Canada. In the early 80s, the Turks and Caicos Islands are figuring out what they want to do as a nation. The two big political parties, the PDM and the PNP, agreed that becoming independent was the way to go. But in 1982, a new election happened, and the PNP retook power. And guess what? They changed their minds about independence. Instead, they wanted to work more closely with other countries, including Canada. They talked about it for years. In 1987, a former cabinet minister named Hazen Argue introduced a motion to explore the idea of the Turks and Caicos joining Canada. People on the islands were excited, like 90% excited. But then, a new foreign affairs discussion took over the spotlight, the Canada-US Free Trade Agreement. Everyone got so into it that Hazen's bill didn't go anywhere. But wait, there's more. In 2004, Canadian MP Peter Goldring visited Turks and Caicos to investigate the idea. Unfortunately, his party said no to the idea. Still, the Nova Scotia province said they would welcome the islands if they ever joined Canada. Nova Scotia has a long history of trade and cultural ties with the Caribbean, and some Nova Scotians saw the potential benefits of closer relations with the region. And in 2014, the premier of Turks and Caicos, Rufus Ewing, thought it was time to revisit the idea of the islands joining Canada's squad. 
He even went to Canada to see if they could strengthen their relationship and make the idea a reality. The visit was full of friendly chats, handshakes, and photo ops, but nothing came of the proposal despite the good vibes. But who knows what Turks and Caicos and their possible union with Canada will be like in the future. Alrighty, now we come to the juicy part, the pros and cons of becoming Canada's 11th province. First up, let's talk about the sweet, sweet benefits. First and foremost, it would mean that the people of Turks and Caicos would be part of a country with a strong democracy, a diverse population, and a high standard of living. Joining Canada would mean that the people of Turks and Caicos would have access to some seriously top-notch social services like healthcare and education. We're talking about high-quality and easily accessible services that could make a real difference in people's lives. And let's talk about the money. Becoming a province of Canada could mean big bucks for the economy of Turks and Caicos. Canada is known for having a rock-solid economy, which could lead to more job opportunities and investments for the islands. Think of all the businesses that could pop up and thrive with the backing of a strong Canadian economy. We can't forget about tourism too. Canadians love to travel, and having Turks and Caicos as part of their own country would make it even more attractive to visit. With easier access and potential promotions, more Canadians could flock to the islands to soak up the sun and indulge in the local culture. This, of course, could mean more tourism dollars for the islands. And who doesn't love some extra cash in their pocket? And here's another thing to consider. The benefits that Canada could reap from this union. By annexing Turks and Caicos, Canada would expand its land and maritime territory, giving the country a stronger foothold in the Caribbean. This could lead to a more significant presence in international affairs, making Canada's voice heard on a larger scale. Plus, having territory in the Caribbean could provide strategic military advantages for Canada. It's not just about the economic benefits for the islands, but also how the Union could benefit Canada. Overall, becoming a province of Canada would be a significant upgrade for Turks and Caicos and could benefit both the islands and Canada in the long run. Sounds pretty good, right? But as with any major decision, there are also some potential downsides. The biggest concern about becoming a part of Canada is the integration cost. Integrating the islands into the Canadian system could be a pretty pricey process. We're talking about things like updating infrastructure, creating new government positions, and establishing new laws and regulations. All of that could add up to a pretty penny. It's like combining pineapple pizza with poutine. Can you picture it? Hmm, not so sure about that combo. But let's get back on track. Another thing to consider is how this union could affect the island's one-of-a-kind culture and identity. We're talking about traditions, history and ways of life that have been passed down for generations. Let's face it, the islands have their own groove and it's pretty cool. On top of that, some locals might worry that their voices won't be heard as clearly in the larger Canadian political scene. That could lead to changes in the legal, education and other parts of daily life currently unique to the islands. But hey, let's not forget the potential for increased economic growth and stability in the long run. Corruption was also a concern when the proposal was raised in 2004 by Conservative MP Peter Goldring. At that time, the Turks and Caicos government officials were involved in a big corruption scandal, which made people question whether they were fit to join Canada's squad. Some people were worried that if the annexation did happen, Canadian taxpayers could end up footing the bill for all the shady business in the territory. Plus, with all the corruption and instability in the government, there were worries about how it could affect Canadian security. There's much to consider regarding Turks and Caicos becoming Canada's 11th province. But who knows, maybe one day, Canadians can enjoy some delicious pineapple poutine on the beautiful beaches of Turks and Caicos as part of their own country. Our discussion about the possibility of Turks and Caicos becoming Canada's 11th province has been quite the roller coaster. While there are various benefits if Turks and Caicos does join Canada, there are also concerns and potential challenges that come with it. It'll definitely be interesting to see how this all plays out in the future. Now it's your turn to weigh in. Do you think Turks and Caicos should become Canada's 11th province? Or should they stay a British overseas territory? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And that concludes whether or not Turks and Caicos should become Canada's 11th province. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more informative content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next one.